Hey there, it's Corey Bretz here from Heirloom Films and Storybooks. I wanted to show you a little bit about how you can make your very own family tree graphics for books or films. And uh, one of the things I do is I use uh, Ancestry. I'm not a reseller, just a fan. But I use Ancestry to create these um, family trees that are um, sort of automatically generated by, by Ancestry. You can do this with other online genealogical platforms as well. Um, what I've done basically is I've um, input some names, I've input some dates of birth, dates of death, uh, things like that, and, uh, and a headshot for each of these people, just a basic JPEG photo. Uh, and then, of course, you know, with Ancestry, you can use their platform to build a, fa a family tree for free without investing any money. Um, of course, you, you know, like everybody, I, I get in involved and I want to start researching and coming up with more information about them. And that's where the monthly subscription comes in to be able to access their data. But you don't need to do that in order to create this graphic here. The difficulty with a graphic like this is that it, you can see that it's actually quite pixelated. That's because it's 72 dots per square inch, um, which is kind of okay if you're going to put it on a video. Um, but even then, it's it's still going to be a little grainy. Um, so the solution is, and, and, and let me just talk about this, if you're going to print it in a book, uh, books are, are, th are 300 dots per inch minimum. And um, so you're going to need to create something a little sharper, a little more crisp to, to go in, in the pages of a book. Um, and so let me just show you um, how we do this that and so I'm in um, when I when I design my books I'm in this program here called um, affinity publisher which is kind of like um, Adobe InDesign or if you're if you've been doing print layout for years and years maybe even Quark Express from from the, the good old days it's all of it is still around um, and you know in a, in a book layout we are working with essentially uh, picture boxes and uh, you know and if you're on another page then we're dealing with like text boxes and things like that and there's just text pasted into these things so um, ideally what we want to be able to do is is in these tr when we're putting in a family tree we want it to be crisp and sharp and so right in here you can see that this this screen grab from um, ancestry is kind of fuzzy and grainy and kind of oily looking right over here this is a um, a document that I've imported um, and you can see that it's a lot more sharp in fact I'm zooming in uh, you can see down on the bottom uh, is that right right here I'm, I'm in a thousand percent here like I'm, I'm in so close and it's so crisp these images were scanned at, at um, 600 dpi anyway so there are more than enough dots for this and 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 I've dropped this in and I've put it in on top of a, a, a picture box here that's or a, or a, a box that's just colorized it's actually colorized the same color as the the default background in, in, in ancestry there but now this will print super sharp and crisp on the page um, when the book is printed so how did I make that well I want to show you how here's another program that I own um, that you could buy as well it's uh, and I'm not a reseller just a fan uh, from uh, affinity and it's called uh, affinity designer and this is basically the same kind of program that um, Adobe Illustrator is and essentially what we're doing is we're working with with shapes um, and um, or vector uh, graphics as they would call them They're just basically arithmetic descriptions of things um, so for example you've got over here you've got this rectangle tool and I just make a rectangle um, and that is not a picture of a rectangle it's not a JPEG or a raster image with dots in it it is literally a, a, a computer description of what a rectangle looks like and so no matter what size you make this big or small it will always hold its sharpness its crispness it will never get grainy um, until and then and then we'll just do is we'll we'll, we'll uh, place this uh, this graphic into the uh, the page layout program so it'll always be sharp and crisp um, that's when we jump back to to, to um, uh, Affinity Publisher, you see how sharp and crisp that is compared to uh, the one right next door, and look how sh uh, fuzzy that is. Eh? And those are exactly the same images I've used to uh, to do this. And so, so that's really what we're doing here. We're making this um, uh, nice and sharp. Um, I'm going to just spend a, a couple of minutes, and you see, as I'm making this bigger and smaller, it's actually retaining its uh, its crispness. It doesn't really change at all. Um, that's that's the absolute. Um, beauty of of uh, of working in in vectors. So back in um, Affinity Designer here. So what I did to create this was I, I literally uh, um, used 
I'll just turn it. You can see over here on the right side we've got a layers palette, same as you'd find in Photoshop or uh, any any kind of design program. And I, I down here at the bottom you'll see that there is a uh, this thing called a screen grab, a tree a tree grab. It's a screen grab, and that's that was the ancestry tree that I uh, originally started, um, just sort of using as a pattern, being being inspired by it, right? And because I I kind of like. I mean, Ancestry is good at what they do. So I, I just click it, toggle it on and off. So it's kind of like a, a map to work with. But let's just say I was starting from scratch here. Here's here's what I'd be doing. I would be um, over here. Let's let's use this this uh, box as an example. And I would just drop this on top, and I would uh, pull this over like that. And I'm basically just trying to map it out so it it kind of looks similar um, I can notice right away that for some reason I've got an outline around it I think it's because the last time I did this I I, I put an outline around the the, um, the headshot box so I, I'm gonna just do um, over here in the right side here you can see on the top of this layers palette it says rectangle um, I can just uh, right click on it and duplicate it so now I got two rectangles they're sitting on top of each other but I can just grab the top one um, make sure I'm selected on the top one. There I am, and I'm just gonna slide it up. And what I'm trying to do, let me turn off the bottom one. What I'm trying to do is make a rectangle that's the same size as Ancestry has chosen, just so I've got a nice um, rounded thing there. And you notice that uh, these ones have these nice rounded corners. I love that look. It's so beautiful. So you just click on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, object you want round corners on, kind of like Ancestry's version of it there. And then in uh, Affinity designer um, as soon as you click on an object you get you get this uh, corner radius thing right here so you can set it so it's rounded uh, and now you can see that it's nice and round there um, what we probably I would say we want is a little less curvature so you got a, just a little slider here you can drop it back I like somewhere around nine percent I don't know why it just seems pleasing to my eyeballs and um, and then that creates that rounded look in there I also would like to perhaps have the box below be rounded as well so I'll, I'll select the um, the rectangle box below and turn it back on and I also would like it to be rounded and I'll turn it on rounded there you go and I'll, I'll ma match it up so it's the same radius percentage or whatever that means so now we've got two circles I don't like the um, the outline around the uh, the main box itself I think we'll use is a drop shadow under it to sort of separate it from the bottom page so what I can do is um, right over here you can see this this menu along the top here keeps changing depending on which tool and which object I'm selected and it's just chock-a-block filled with um, features and things but right now you can see that it says there's a one-point stroke that's what this means right here that's on there so if I just slide that to the left um, you can see, I don't know how obvious that was, but the stroke that was on that um, bigger rectangle under there is now vanished. It's gone. Um, and so these, you see to the right of there, that one looks kind of like this one now. Um, the fun thing is, is that you, any object inside of um, Affinity Designer can be used as a mask or like a window if you think of it that way. And so um, we can take a photo of a person and we all we do is we just drag the photo directly out of our uh, our Windows uh, folders, um, you know, using File Manager, or we could be using um, if we were on a Mac, it would be Finder. You just drag it straight in to right onto the canvas here, and um, and then and then we pop it in. Now you can see this is massively larger than it needs to be. I'm just eyeballing it, trying to get it roughly the same size, and um, and so we'll it's going to fit in the window right in this little box right there and all we're doing is just sizing it up roughly and you can see over here in the layers palette there's that graphic just laying right at the top of there and then if we click on the little box we want it into you can see it's the the rounded rectangle that's at the top there in fact let's just um, let's just double click in there let's just call this headshot because um, that's really what's going to wind up in there um, and uh, there's a cool function in Affinity products, Affinity Designer, Affinity um, Publisher, and even Affinity uh, Photo. Um, they're the three main programs they have, and that is that you can you can drag 
you can nest objects and as you do that that as you pull one object inside of another object the top object acts like a window um, and so this headshot box um, if I drag this layer here which is that image of, of the, the woman if I drag her down and just drop her inside of this headshot box I've just created uh, it's gonna she's gonna be sticking through there let's just pull her over a little bit so so you'll watch what happens is it'll it'll pop in in real time here we go I'm just drag this down and drop it into headshot see what's happened she's now peering out through that window she's literally just um, um, just laying uh, on top you can see the, um, the, the the blue lines there that's the uh, outline of the of the JPEG still um, and in fact we can grab them and size her up so that's what we'll do now we'll just move her around but the the that one box called headshot is now acting kind of like a window which is super useful when we're making family trees like this so once we get this set up um, then essentially all we're doing is um, is cloning these boxes one after the other and just changing out the photo and the text uh, let's do the text again um, so the way to do text is very much I like to use um, um, what we call paragraph text or text frames and that is because they will wrap um, and they will um, spin things around <clears throat> um, let's, let's just call her oops what have I got going on here so sometimes you gotta look carefully at your your layouts here because I think my my frame text here is is lower um, where's the box this can get confusing. We got. Okay, I see it's under. It's under the. Uh, it's actually working. It's just. It's just obscured by layers above it. So let's just pull this higher up and pop it on top of the. Um, <clears throat> in fact, let's let's rename this one called rounded rectangle. Let's call it uh, uh, box background because that's the big the, the larger rectangle that's that's under there so there we go so now we've got this great little um, text box there it's way too big but let's just uh, size it up up to a better size and um, and I'll give her a, fin a, a great name mrs if only I could type today mrs hat lady and you say well, what's going on there what's happening here well what's happening is, is this is paragraph text so it's, it's it's sort of bouncing around in there a little bit. Um, a, a cool trick also is you can use uh, Shift Enter and to to force a uh, pay a line space in there without adding additional leading. Uh, doesn't get any any thicker or higher. And of course, you can change your font types. You've got all the fonts that are available in your computer. My suggestion is pick one that you love and stick with it. Um, and uh, and I'll, just for some speed, I'll just uh, duplicate this Alt drag. You see, it's lower down in the thing, so let's just pull it up to here. There you go. So so we've kind of just very quickly built a. Um, a box for uh, a, a profile really on a family tree is how this is how we people call this and um, that now um, if, if you want to see some magic um, I'm just going to turn off the background uh, screen grab there there we go so that's now off I haven't put any lines in yet we can do that quite easily but if we go over to oh I know one more thing we're going to do we're going to put in a bit of a drop shadow so right under here outer shadow and we're going to make that, uh, let's see, add some radius. See this fuzz that's occurring around the bottom there? And we're going to have it offset so it's only on the bottom right. And we're going to scale it with the object. So the object gets bigger or smaller, so does the shadow. Um, and so now you've got this nice little fuzz going on. It's a little more pronounced than that one, so I'd want to match that up a bit better. Um, but when you clone the boxes, um, the, the shadow would be the same on all of them, right? And, um, and that's interesting. That's We'll have to sort that out, but that's hanging around on the inside there. So, so that's that's how we do this. And if you jump back now to Designer, um, or uh, uh, your your page layout program, uh, we should be. I think I have to save it first. Hang on here. Let's just save file, save. There we go. So that's saved. If I'm back in. You can see this thing. It says it's now changed. There it is. It just popped right in. That that very same um, profile image that we just created is now listed, and I'm gonna have to fix up the edges. I think I, I messed up the size of the box a little bit there, but that's easy to do. We just pop back over here, and let's just size it down. I think it's because I got an outline on it. I wasn't really accounting for that when I started this, but this is not. We're not working in stone, so uh, it's it's uh, easy to fix things. 
in a way that makes sense for you there. Yeah, that's better like that. Okay, so and then you just click save and you jump back to your page layout program and um, it should uh, update eventually. I guess I've still got it hanging over the edge. Oh yeah, I do. There we go. That's better. Okay, and now save it. <laughs> Once you get the first one nailed down, um, the rest of them, you're cloning them. So all you're doing is dragging an image and changing the text on each one. So it becomes a little simpler. Well, anyways, you get the idea. I'll have to fiddle with that a bit more. Um, so that is how you make uh, really gorgeous. Uh, you see how crisp that is as I zoom in on it. Um, that, that's how we do this in um, sort of personally custom built family history books and films and uh, and it it looks great and it's not once you've done the first one it gets quite easy just to clone them and duplicate them so um, when you're thinking about your family history book and and all of the, the the materials you've got the 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 census records the old photos um, and the stories and its timelines and things like that what what is it that you are going to make out of it and and how is it going to inspire the next generation um, you can check me out at uh, heirloomfilms.ca and uh, have a free 30-minute consultation with me and we'll chat about your family history project and where you're at with it and what's next for you so that you can finally hand over to the next generation to the great grandkids who aren't even born yet a book or a film or something that will inspire them from the moment that they are born so i'm corey bretz thanks for watching and uh, best of luck with your family history project